culture is a massive part of building a bridge between us and them, whatever us and them is. I've been an immigrant six times in many different countries. I always feel comfortable when I'm in a kitchen. I worked at a three-star Michelin restaurant in France. The chef there said to me very basically, Chef, you can never own a restaurant. There's not a black-owned restaurant that has the ambition that you have. My name is Chef Marcus Samuelson, and I'm the founder and co-founder of Marcus Samuelson Group and also Red Rooster. Red Rooster is become one of the most famous restaurants in New York City, a vision of uh, bringing people together. Opening Red Roost in 2010 was massive, not just for me, but for the people that are impacted here in this community. Harlem has such an incredible excellence of storytelling when it comes to art, music, writing, and food is right there. I wanted to do something that combined all of that. We want to share and broadcast the story of Harlem, of its community, to the world. The restaurant industry is one of the most incredible industries in the world because uh, it's all about working together and overcoming and we're in a moment right now with COVID where we're really challenged but I've also seen during this time some of the best work in all of us. I might be the only Swedeopian that you know I was born in Ethiopia but raised in Sweden. We ate fish probably four or five days a week. And I grew up very closely with, obviously, my family, but also my grandmother. My grandmother was really the cook in the house. Uh, if we didn't like mom's dinner, we biked over to grandma's house, where not only did we eat well, but we also had to cook it. Everything from apple that has fallen became apple jam, to always herring to pickle or fish to smoke. And when you're a teenager and you start to have those weekend jobs and stuff like that. I always worked in restaurants or anything within hospitality, not knowing that grandmother had trained us in this field. I learned a lot about social skills, my social skills being in the restaurant, navigating in a kitchen. It was a place I always felt at home, whether I worked in Japan, France, Switzerland, or here in America. I always feel comfortable when I'm in a kitchen. Who wants some donuts? It's all about understanding flavors, right? All of us can taste the same things, actually. Salt, sweet, sour, bitter, heat, and umami. Umami is probably the one that comes almost last to us in terms of understanding. Everyone can taste this. So the way you build it as a chef, you do it through fragrance, you do it through aesthetic, and you do it through textures. And it's all about reimagining and dreaming this, but also then pulling all the strings together to making a dish. Ooh, it smells good. I worked at a three-star Michelin restaurant in France and the chef there said to me very basically like, chef, you can never own a restaurant. There's not a black-owned restaurant that has the ambition that you have. It doesn't exist. Not in France, not in Europe, anywhere. As harsh as that maybe sounded, that gave me a clear choice that it wasn't fair, but in one way he was stating a fact. Being black, life is extremely harsh choices that you are set out to do is never easy. So for me, it gave me clarity. I have to now go to America. Not that I'd seen it in America, but I do know there was black excellence. Maya Angelou, I knew of Oprah, I knew of Prince, you know, like things like that, there's black excellence. I always believed in myself and I was always nurtured a lot of confidence from my parents. And I was like, I can go. So I did, I got a job and I really grew up through the first job I had here at Restaurant Aquavit. And the success that we had, got three stars from the New York Times, and it showed me that I could belong. That everything that I practiced since I was, came out from really my grandmother's kitchen at a very early age, I can now put to practice. And hitting that main stage in Manhattan was something that gave me an enormous amount of confidence, but also seeing a path that I can own a restaurant, I can add value, I can create this dream. So I started writing down. One day I went to own my restaurant. And I moved up to Harlem and I started to study the community. And I was guided from a lot of people what Harlem really meant, not just as a name, actually as a neighborhood. And with all of that studying that took seven years, we opened Red Rooster. So that Southern food coming up north, that's what we celebrate here. 
Part of it has to do with the Great Migration, one of these most incredible events in American history, what we got so much out of jazz, music, so we know that. The fact that six million people moved from the south to north also changed how we eat. The other side of the menu is also through the lens of an immigrant, right? Harlem has so many different pockets, depending on what history, Italian Harlem, Jewish Harlem, Puerto Rican, Spanish Harlem, the waves of immigrants that come to Harlem, like me and my family, we're from Ethiopia, we're from Sweden. So this mashup between African-American Harlem that is really traditionally based in the migration, the food that was brought from the south to the north. And then you mash that up with the immigrant Harlem. And that's all through the lens of comfort food. This is the food at Red Rooster. You know, I came to this country with $300 and it took 25 years to build this and 10 days to break it down. Pre-COVID, there's 180 people that worked in Red Rooster. 180 people serving 4,000 customers a week. And also jobs that have healthcare and creating and working in the middle class. Every day you're nervous, is this gonna work? That's really the state very often as an immigrant, you, you just come to your place, you bet everything on, on this idea, and you work so hard to make it work. I share that story with a lot of people in this country. When something like COVID happens, it's like all of that is sense of security is taken away and, and um, it gets real gnarly and scary and I also have to acknowledge that I've been extremely privileged and lucky to be able to get through this and it wouldn't be possible with a lot of help from the community as well. I mean, the restaurant community as we knew it pre-COVID, it's gonna take five, six years to build back. There's no other way to look at it. But I can't put my head in my sand for five, six years, we gotta work. We're grateful to loans and opportunities that local government and federal government gave restaurants. It was very hard to get them. Black and brown communities had a harder time getting to those loans. Good. How are you? You need anything? Yeah. Boom, there you go. March 16th, we closed our restaurant in a traditional setting and became a community kitchen. And we served over 250,000 meals for the community, for the neediest, for the first responders. And we partnered with Jose Andres and the World Central Kitchen. My staff came in, all gloved up, masked up, and started to serve others. It would have been easier for most people just to sit out. We came to work every day. We showed up every day to serve our community. The word restaurant means to restore. As a chef, as a community leader, I have a role. It's not a passive role, I have an active role. Be passionate about your field, about the vertical you pick, because if you're gonna be passionate and you're open to learn, you will never be out of work.